Hello guys, today I'll discuss about cyber war between Russia and Ukraine. First of all, I'll discuss about its history. Since the collapse of Soviet Union in 1991, Russian-Ukraine cyber war had become a component of confrontation between Russia and Ukraine. Russian cyber weapon Urobus had been around since 2005. During the mass protest in 2013, the first attack on information systems of various private enterprises as well state institutions were recorded. In 2013, Operation Armageddon, a Russian companion for systematically cyber spying on the information systems of government agencies, law enforcement, defense agencies, began thought to help Russia on the battlefield. Between year 2013 and 14, a computer virus known as Snake Robus Tudla was introduced by Russia to affect information system of Ukrainian government agencies. In February uh, to March 2014, uh, Russian troops entered Crimea communication centers and they were raided and Ukrainian, uh, Ukraine's fiber optic cables were tampered as well and they were cut down and the connections between peninsula and mainland Ukraine. Moreover, researchers have also identified two groups of Russian hackers during the year 2015 and stated that these groups of Russian hackers have been active in the Russian-Ukrainian cyber war including, so, uh, including the so-called APT-29 which we can also known as Cozy Bear, uh, APT-28 which we can we also known as Pawnstrom or Fancy Bear. Ukrainian government websites, news, and social media were shut down or targeted in DDoS attacks. Next, I'll talk about cyber terrorism between Russia and Ukraine. For years, Ukraine have, uh, has been a proving ground for Russian cyber weapons. The confrontation between Russia and Ukraine since the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 is a component of Russian-Ukraine cyber war. Russian cyber weapon Urobus had been introduced around since 2005 while during the mass protest in 2013 the first attack on the information system of private enterprises and state institutions of Ukraine were recorded at that time. In December 2015, Russian cyber warfare continued with the Ukrainian power grid hack and again in 2016, paralysis of the state treasury of Ukraine in December 2016 and afterwards in 2017, a mass hacker supply chain was attacked and in 2000, uh, January 2022, Ukrainian government websites were hacked and jammed. Next, I'll talk about cyber attacks. As military conflict has gone up between Ukraine and Russia, it resulted in an increase in fear of unprecedented cyber wars. Russia attacked on a large scale on Ukraine's power grid in 2005. Experts are also monitoring both countries closely, fear, fearing a volatile crisis that could lead to a huge conflict playing out online one that could outlast the physical battles. U.S. President Joe Biden has warned Russia that the country would be prepared to respond to any attack on critical infrastructure and the other countries has reprimanded Russia for years of a cyber pearl harbor. Russia has been attacking Ukraine for a long time and fears of cyber war warfare are due to the long history of international attacks by Russia. Russia attacked a large scale on Ukraine's power grid in 2015. In, in 2017, Moscow attacked Ukraine through the data wooing virus NotPetya, a destructive malware that ultimately spread globally. The invasion of Russia in Ukraine leashed several smaller hacks starting in January when more than 70 websites of Ukraine were defaced and separate. Cyber attacks 
destroyed government websites especially the websites of ministry of foreign affairs and the ministry of education these attacks have been significant and unexpected and they have not yet been cataclysmic this is so because so interna no international power yet wants to be the one to cast the first stone in cyber third world war moreover national powers are also now better prepared to rule out attacks than they are previously so it is somewhere possible that some larger hackers hacks or larger hack, hacker groups have been quietly thwarted ukraine has spent almost the past 7 years in the wake of its power grid attack in 2015 stealing its infrastructure it has seemed that russia is investing more resources in coordinated disinformation campaigns than overt hacking operations more uh, next russia's cyber attacks operation armageddon 2013 operation snake february 2014 june 14 attacks on automated system elections ukraine power grid hack in december 2015 russia attack ukraine using trojan virus named black energy and chernev with see reasons this was also known as the first successful cyber attack on a power grid in ukraine the second ukraine power grid hack in december 2016 then in december 2016 they uh, what we can call paralysis of state treasury of ukraine in january 2022 russia attacks on ukrainian government websites next uh, ukrainian cyber attacks operation like precorm uh, kormaka ground bait may 20 uh, 2016 operation may 9 2016 in june 2016 a new malware was also launched to hack the corporate server of russia named channel 1 in october 2016 a leak was launched named sukru leaks on 25th this february 2022 the first vice prime minister and minister of digital transformation Mykhail Fedorov established the IT army of Ukraine and moreover this effort was brought uh, started during the Russian invasion of Ukraine in the year 2022 the primary aim of establishing the IT army in Ukraine was cyber warfare against against Russia uh the uh, what the prime minister also requested the assistance of a cyber specialist and tweeted a telegram with a list of 31 websites of russian business and state organizations next russian cyber attacks in 2012 uh, 22 uh, now in here i'll discuss uh, uh, more about ddos companion and uh, tell you more uh, how these attacks are done by russia and what is ddos attack how did russia attack ukraine websites with ddos first of all what is ddos attack ddos attack is uh, also stands for distributed denial of service it falls under the category of malicious cyber attacks which are used by hackers or criminal cyber criminals to make network services or websites or host machines unavailable to their users on the network the target of a ddos attack is to overwhelm uh, the machine as well as its supporting resources ddos attacks are different from conventional denial of service attacks in which they are originated from distributed or multiple ip addresses the ddos attack has an enormous scope threat to get an idea of its scope check the uh, check the point threat cloud uh, live cyber threat map which provides a different attack map of ddos next i'll talk about is how did russia attack ukraine's website with ddos so for understanding for more understanding how they carried out the attack we first have to understand how 
DDoS attacks take place. So the following are some points that I'll discuss. First is the goal of a DDoS attack is to stop users from using a server or network resources by overwhelming it with service requests. In a simple denial of service attack, there is one attack computer and one victim. Whereas in the case of distributed denial of service attack, they rely on armies of infected or bo bot computers to carry out tasks simultaneously. Hackers build this bot botnet which exploits a vulnerable system, turning it into a bot master. What a booster do in this case is that it seeks out other various vulnerable systems and infects them using malware. It can be a Trojan virus or another. When multiple numbers of devices are infected, the hacker gives them an order to attack. After this, each of the infected system begins sending an enormous flood of requests to the target network and also overloads it resulting in slowdowns or complete failure. There are various types of DDoS attacks, for example, volume-based, protocol, application layer. UDP, ICMP, and uh, other spoof, uh, spoof packet floods fall under the category of volume-based attacks. These volume-based attacks consume bandwidth, more effective. It will be if uh, it generates a higher bit per second rate, that is BPS rate. Protocol attacks include the Smurf DDoS attack, Ping of Death, and SYN floods, SYN floods. The ser this server will crash if a large number of packets per second rate is achieved. In end, application layer attacks. These are like zero day DDoS or slow loris target. Uh, this targets the apps by making to be lawful requests but with a very high volume. The web server of the victim will shut down if there are a large number of requests in a short period. Now it is understood how DDoS attack is carried out. Now let's understood how Russia used this attack for attacking Ukraine. Russia attacked Ukraine websites through DDoS in early February. There were almost 3000 DDoS attacks detected. Russia used these attacks to destroy the information and communication infrastructure of Ukraine. The attacks targeted banking and defense websites of Ukraine. The attacks came as tensions between Ukraine and Russia. Russia continued Russia continued to attack Ukraine through DDoS attacks and in the first week of March it launched a new malware as a service platform known as Dana Bot. To launch DDoS attacks against the websites of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. DDoS attacks against military and financial institutions in Ukraine that took place before the invasion on February 15 to 16 were attributed to the Russian government by officials in the US and UK. The agency identified these DDoS attacks which targeted the websites of Ukrainian parliament. President Volodymyr Zelensky, the cabinet of ministers, the minister of defense and the minister of internal affairs of Ukraine. As per the SSCIP, the most powerful DDoS attack was more than 100 GPPS against the government of Ukraine. As per the research from Radware, it is detected that the largest ever DDoS attack was recorded during the first three quarters of 2021 and the attack was of 348 GBPS something uh, and it was almost 3.5 times the size of most powerful DDoS attack against the country. A security professional, Chris Partridge, who has been tracking cyber attacks, said that these DDoS attacks or distributed denial of service attacks against Ukraine are definitely not setting any records. Meanwhile, Anonymous, a hacktivist group and hackers in the IT army of Ukraine 
have continued hitting back with dubious attacks against Russia. Meanwhile, uh, hackers in Ukraine's IT army and hacktivist groups such as Anonymous have continued hitting back with dubious attacks against Russian targets. So now I'll discuss how Ukraine can prevent these DDoS attacks. To this point, we are very good to understand how DDoS is carried and why it is carried out. Now let's understand how Ukraine can prevent it itself from uh, these types of attacks. First of all, there are various ways to protect against such dangerous DDoS attacks as per the Carnegie Mellon Software Engineering Institute limiting the number of login attempts the user can make and locking out them of their accounts is the most common attack most commonly this technique is used against a company and keeps the users logged out of their systems for a longer period of time there must be an emergency access point to the system for this eventually eventuality Ukraine should disable any unneeded or unfamiliar network services that could be used as a DDoS infiltration point. There are other options as well such as data quota and a disk partition to limit the impact of the attack. There should be a baseline for network performance and server traffic and it is very critical to establish. Extremely High rates of consumption with no proper reason often points out that an attacker is attempting to break the strength of defense system of the company. Alongside this kind of monitoring, Ukraine should invest in a special anti-DDoS service that features automatic scanning to detect the most common types of DDoS attacks. To provide maximum protection, this software needs to be timely updated by the Ukrainian government or the Ukrainian IT armies. Next, like uh, I discussed more about DDoS companion. Now, what is Whispergate? I'll just explain those. What is Whispergate? It is a kind of a new malware which is uh, named as Whipper malware, which was placed on Ukrainian system it is a type of malware that has two types of stages that corrupts the system and displays fake ransomware notes and encrypts files based on certain file extensions. Next, what is Hermetic Vipers? In February, the cybersecurity companies detected a new set of Viper attack. It is a kind of Viper attack as a Whisper Gate. Uh, another name of this attack is also Foxblade. This Viper target bypass Windows security features in Ukraine, resulting in boot failure of victims' devices. Russian attackers fragments the files on disk and overwrites them. In addition to this, Hermetic Viper, several other pieces of malware were developed, including a worm that was used to spread the Viper. Next, what is Isaac Viper? At the ending of uh, February, Russia launched another Viper named Isaac Viper against Ukrainian government systems. Russia launched this Viper to attack Ukrainian networks. It was detected by the experts that this Viper recursively wipes the files in a single thread. It was launched just after the Hermetic Viper and appeared more targeted. UNC 1151. This is a uh, on 14 January, Ukraine government official suspected Belarusian threat actor UNC-1151 of conducting a cyber attack targeting more than 70 government websites. Hackers destroyed the website and started posting threatening messages like be afraid and expect the worst in the advance of Russian troops crossing the border and entering the Ukraine. Next is APT-28. It is a Russian threat against uh, threat actor that was an engaged in credential pissing companion targeting users of popular Ukrainian media company UKRnet. It seems that the companion was suspended when Google's threat analysis group that is tagged detected it. 
Caddy Viper. Caddy Viper in March, the security researchers of Ukraine detected a new Viper that does not share significant code and similarities with other malware analyzed by the researchers. The Viper was designed to provide damage while still preserving access to affected network. Gamerdron. Gamerdron. In mid-March, a new malware was detected named Gamedron, which was found spreading the load edge backdoor among Ukrainian organizations. Viasat outage. Viasat outage is a satellite provider which was hit by a cyber attack on February 24th that caused wide-ranging communication outage throughout Ukraine. So like I... Uh, Targeting of Ukrainian military in phishing attempts. This Ukrainian computer emergency response team on 25th February accused Belarusian state-sponsored hacking group UNC-1151 of hacking the email accounts of country's military personnel in a mass phishing attack. Next, I'll talk about Ukrainian cyber attacks in 2022 that is anonymous on march 1st the group anonymous a decentralized group of hacktivists declared war against russia the group claimed that it has disabled the sites run by russia state owned media anonymous appeared to have targeted pro russia media outlets several times over the past two weeks it also claimed that it has hacked several major Russian broadcasters including state-run television channels such as Russia 24, Channel 1, Moscow 24 and streaming services Wink and IV. Programming on these services were, was also interrupted in Ukraine. IT Army of Ukraine The efforts of Ukraine in cyberspace have made use of volunteer groups coordinated through social media and telegram channels one of the largest efforts by the ukrainian government to coordinate the actions of hacked visits was to establish the it army of ukraine the it army has been functioning by posting important targets to a telegram channel with hundreds of thousands of members while individuals or groups use the details provided to launch attacks against the specified targets. Moreover, the websites of several Russian banks, the Russian power grid, and the railway systems has been targeted by the IT uh, army and launched widespread DDoS attacks against other targets of strategic importance. Belarusia cyber partitions attacks on train systems. The Belarusian cyber Partisans is a group that launched cyber attacks in January on Belarusian train systems in protest of Russian troops deployment in the country. In February, it appeared to have continued its companion against Belarusian railways. The attacks hacked those websites used to purchase tickets and may have encrypted data on switching and routing systems. Although it was unclear as to the scale and severity of the attacks beyond website takedowns. Next is RU Ransom Viper. On March 1, 2022, the emergence of the RU Ransom Viper represented one of the first uses of a Viper by pro-Ukrainian hackers and may portend a new phase in the ongoing cyber campaign against Russia. Notwithstanding the name, RU Ransom functioned as a viper and offered victims no opportunities to pay to have their systems de decrypted. The malware appears to check the victim's systems for a Russian IP address and if it doesn't find one, the malware halts execution or stops execution. The malware creators also appear to be actively released new versions of the viper and it may only grow more potent over time to time thank you this was my presentation have a wonderful day